Peggy 18. One of the other big additions to the game, building settlements. That was really, really cool. That was a big surprise to a lot of people. Let's take a little look at uh, settlements in action. So we actually call this the workshop system. So this is building in your original neighborhood. We do have a, we have a bunch of sites. And so you know, I think some of these videos, the, the fans are in as well need to pause and look what's on the screen. But you rip apart the world, and then you can, you can build what you want. You know, the inspirations here, I think, are, are pretty clear. Things like Minecraft and other things we like. And it's, it's a really great fit for Fallout. We, and we wanted to get in, uh, you know, is there a way that, like, within the game, we can take this, like, modding idea or, you know, tools we've had in the past and do something in-game that the, the players can make their own without having to leave the game and, and do it in the creation kit or things like that. And it, it does fit into part of the fiction of, of part of the game. Um, but it, it is optional. I love this. I'm going to name drop Ryan Sears. He's one of our artists built that. It's really great. He showed that to me. I was like, oh, I am putting that in a video. That is awesome. You also um, announced UGC, user-generated content in the game. Some people might have missed that. Can you talk to us a little bit about what we're doing with UGC and when it's going to be available? Yeah, so we're doing it on the PC similar to Skyrim. We'll have the creation kit that will come out, uh, not at launch, just like Skyrim, it'll come out early, early 2016. Uh, and then, you know, you'll have all the PC mods and all of that stuff, but then uh, what's really exciting is we're finally bringing it to console. So working with Microsoft. So once we get it out on the PC with the creation kit, it's then going to come to Xbox One. Okay. Um, there's a lot of like back-end stuff we need to do and, and, and work with them. And then once that's settled, you know, our, our plan is to do that work with Sony um, and, and get them on board and uh, have that follow up. But the timetable is kind of fuzzy right now. Are you on excited? That, so I don't want to yeah. promise a, sure. a date on, on, on that part. But uh, what you say? Am I excited? Are you, are you excited? To oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Uh, look, I think the modding part of our games is just, you know, it goes back to like making your own adventures with D&D &D and those kind of things. Sure. And we've always pushed on it really hard. But if you, if at the end of the day, the, uh, the, the audience that can do that stuff or is even doing it, it's not as big as, as people think percentage wise. And it's just been on PC. So the, the, the first way to make that, you know, a much larger percentage of the audience is to bring it to console where a lot of our players are. Another thing you're doing uh, that offers, again, this great player freedom that you guys really love at Bethesda Game Studios, the advanced crafting or the crafting system, which might be, as you said, the most advanced crafting system yet for a Fallout game, for a Bethesda Easily. game. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the crafting system in action. Todd, tell us, how does the crafting work, and why is it the most advanced crafting system you've ever offered the players? Um, I mean, the main gist of it is that we have all this junk around the world. So it sort of started like, if you looked at alchemy in Skyrim, but imagine that was on everything. Um, and so that stuff in the beginning of the game that you would just think is crap and laying around, you would then realize like, oh, I need the baby bottle because it has X. Um, and so it was, a, it was a look at having components, so having a set number of components in the world and then having lots and lots of items that were different mixes and matches of those components and then you realize that like adhesive is an is important element for building a lot of things. Then you realize actually duct tape and glue tend to be more valuable than like grenades, like for real in the game. <laughs> Um, and so just by system, we, we, we tend to work and want to systemize things for a big world. Right. And the fact that the stuff breaks down to components, we then have the ability to add, you know, if we are this, like a water bottle and the chairs and this and a television, and then we figure out what components it would have. And it, it, we were, it we're able to balance that on a massive scale instead of if, if the crafting system required specific items. 
to craft, if, if that makes sense. So it, it does, and in essence, what you've done is ensure that almost every, or, or at least what I think, ensure that almost everything has a purpose in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Is that, is that correct? Is yes, and not everything has components. That's the better right. way of saying it. Right, okay. Yeah. But you won't be collecting junk and then it remains junk. Right, right. You don't there have anything that just has, value. like, my only existence is I am worth two caps. Right. We have nothing like that. So, so it also causes this very interesting economy in the game where traditionally you would pick everything up and then just sell it. Mm -hmm. And now you pick it up and you say, well, I can make this out of this or I can make this out of this or maybe I do want to sell it. And so um, we usually at this point of the project have, we're trying to balance the economy and get rid of, you know, all these money exploits. And it's at this point of the project, we have actually have very few because most of the people on the team playing the game are hoarding all the crap to build with instead of selling it. 